سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله بسم الله الحمد لله السلام عليكم which means peace be unto you the same greeting that Moses greeted his followers with the same greeting that Jesus greeted his followers with and the same greeting that the last and final messenger sent to mankind greeted his followers with and that is the greetings of peace by the way it's the same way of life the same way of life that Jesus by the way called his followers to and Moses and Abraham and all the messengers of God which was that way that way of submission to the one God worshiping him alone and not his creation this is that way of life that we're calling you to here today Islam and this is what we're talking about some of the beautiful teachings that the last and final messenger brought for all of mankind so we're going to be talking about something that all of us are going to have to face something that is very serious but many of us are forgetting about it not thinking about it death are you prepared for it it's coming you got an appointment with it so we're going to be discussing it not according to our whims and desires but according to the last and final revelation sent to mankind which is the Quran and the authentic teachings of the last and final messenger who was sent to mankind so we have somebody who is very well versed with the verbatim word of God the Quran and the teachings of the last and final messenger when we come back we're going to be talking to him so sit tight you don't go nowhere we'll be right back on the Dean show Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger Allah La ilaha illallah Allah There's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah La ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam. Allah wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. It's good, good to have you back here with us. Good to be here always, mashallah. Today on this show, and we're going to continue on, inshallah, God willing, to talk about something that should be on the minds of the people, something that is very important. You know, if you got an examination at school, you don't doze off, you, you know, you study for it. Right. But this exam, this appointment that we have, death, many people, they're not thinking about it. So let's start with this. Why do you think this is something that people tend to either make a joke about, they think this is something left for the movies, something that, you know, it's... You know, they know they're going to face it, but they just ignore it. And then if somebody tries to, someone who is serious, who tries to bring something up about this, is something odd. You know what? They change the subject, make a U-turn, go the other way, and just dodge it. Why do you think this is, Shaykh? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. The reason this is happening in most of the human beings, unless those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on, they are basically in state of forgetfulness. The same way they would seek intoxications, to feel good about themselves, to be in a state of not in their mind and not to be serious of what is coming ahead. This is a serious disease that we need to, as Muslims, to educate ourselves and to educate others about the reality of things. We're not trying to be pessimistic and call people to be sad and misery in life. Actually, it's the opposite. When somebody is knowing what is coming ahead and being serious about it and taking the precautions and the means to have a good way of life in this life and the happiness in it, and what comes after for people just to think. To think. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He called people to ponder over things. Not to be always seeking ways of intoxications, just being in a state of forgetfulness. To think and to ponder over how things are around us. And it's mentioned in the Quran when it comes to death. For us as Muslims, it's not a time of being sad and misery when we remember death. Because this is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Mulk, تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عمل. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the most exalted. He's the one that created life and death. For what purpose? So that He would test you among you who is the best of the deeds among you. So God, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, is the most wise. So death is not just something that happens without a wisdom like this. It happens by the great and the perfect wisdom of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for the test of the human beings and for them to prepare themselves 
And it's a period of time that we have to live on this earth, and then after that, everybody shall return to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know what? There's, you know, when when, when we hear some of these uh, Arabic terms, we got a lot of non-Muslims, and they hear you go. You, uh, mm -hmm. This uh, sound going off, but now that's warning us that we need to define some words. They heard the term Muslim mm -hmm. and they heard the term Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, can you take a second before we continue on mm -hmm. just to define what a Muslim is and what Quran is and what is uh, Allah so people have a more familiarity right. with these terms? The word Muslim means someone that submitted himself to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And if actually we take away the word Muslim and the word Islam and we just talk about the translation of it. I think this is what every human being should detest to and should believe in. We are created. We are creation of the creator of the heavens and the earth. And most of the human beings, they believe in the creator of the heavens and the earth. And they know that he is the provider, that he is the creator. But how many of them, they submit themselves totally to him. And this submission, as you mentioned in the beginning of the show, that it's the job of every messenger that God had sent to the human beings from Adam peace be upon him, all the way to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, going through all the messengers, Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they came with that same message, which is Islam. Islam is not just some letters here that has no meaning to it. It means submit yourself to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And it's not referring to a human being or a certain organization or a cult or anything like that. It's the same main core in the core of the human being, in his nature, that he wants to turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the creator of the heavens and the earth, the Almighty. And the same word is used in, uh, in Aramaic and in Arabic, and it's a unique word that nothing is the like of him. But when you say God, you can make it a plural, you can say gods, you can say goddess, mm -hmm. feminine, masculine, things of that nature. But when you say Allah, it's nothing is the like of it. And he is nothing is the like of him, and he's the all hearer. They all see it as it's mentioned in the Quran. All right, great. So they don't probably have to take that Arabic class, not quite right. yet. So, right. <laughs> all right, good. So now the uh, non-Muslim, he can kind of get a better understanding. And that's what we're here for, trying to help you develop a better understanding on this unique way of life that is for all mankind. Now, tell us, what are some of the benefits when you think about death? You said that this is not a call to pessimism. It's actually something good to think about death. So what are some of the benefits of a human being when he thinks about death and he takes a time out from just work, work, money, money, work, work, party, party, and he thinks about death. Because this is primarily what people do, work, money, party, when they get out of this and they think about death. Talk to us. If somebody, for example, will be told that an enemy will come and attack you and enter this room on you at a time that you don't know when, but it's definitely happening, what would be the state of that person? Either he will just ignore that fact and just keep drinking wine, for example, trying to forget this matter. It's not going to push it away. It's going to happen no matter what. Or he should take the matter seriously and prepare himself so that when the attack comes, he'll be able to defend himself and win. Yeah. So who is among the two is the most wise? One who prepares, yeah. Everybody will agree to this. And this is why the issue of death, every single human being believes in. Whether it's a believer, a disbeliever, someone that is a deviant, someone that is on the straight path, everybody believes that one day he has to depart from this life. So if this is a fact, the most wise among the human beings are the ones that would take the matter serious and get to search and see the truth, what is after death? Mm -hmm. If a person asks himself these questions sincerely, and then since he realizes and believes that in the creator of the heavens and the earth, and if each person have his own wisdom in doing things, this cup is here for, for a reason, this desk is for a reason, just things doesn't happen by itself like this. And the same way, why God created life and death for a purpose. And that is to worship Him alone and to submit to Him and to follow His revelations in, for example, the last revelation, which is the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So the Qur'an tells us that this death that everybody runs away from, flee away from, the most rich man on the face of earth, he would spend all of his wealth to save himself from death. The most precious thing in one's life is his own life. And life is so precious, of course. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in the Quran and in the Sunnah, the Hadith and the sayings of the Prophet sallallahu that since this is something that is coming, prepare yourself for it. And if you prepare yourself for it, you'll have the better and the best life in this world. You're not intoxicated anymore. You're having the happiness, the real one in this life and you will take it with you in the everlasting one. And if you see the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth, 
that life is so limited and every person has his own set of amount of breaths in number. Once the last one comes, life is over. And then everybody shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said a very beautiful hadith. When he saw a janaza, a janaza meaning a funeral that was passing, passing by, he said, this janaza, this funeral, the person that died, either that he will be comfortable now or people will be comfortable by him departing from this world. He is one of two. Mm -hmm. And he said the first type is the believer. He is going to the comfort, to the real comfort, going to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. And we see this mercy all, all around us. And for the believers, they return back to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the one, the disbeliever, the human beings and the animals and all that exists, now they have more comfort by him departing because he was a mean of spreading corruption on the face of earth and bringing sins and so on. So knowing this and knowing also that the Prophet sallallahu he said, أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ هَذِي مِلَذَّاتِ Which means, remember death a lot. If you say that to a normal person, he would say, why you want us to have a miserable <laughs> life? It's not. It's when you remember it, that means you will prepare yourself for it. That means you will be more real. And when you're more real, you'll, you'll taste the real sweetness of happiness and not the one that is just in state of forgetfulness. Yeah, you mentioned and you told us before one hadith, one saying of the last and final messenger encouraging actually running sports. Do you remember this? Right. So Islam encourages not to be someone who is just isolated, worshipping in the house all day, not getting out in society. So to be the best husband, to be the best human being possibly that you can be according to how God wants you to be, Allah, correct? Right. Right. So now by thinking about death, I want you to tell us because have you heard this saying where the last and final messenger had said the best among you are those that are the best in manners right. and the, uh, the most intelligent among you are the ones who think of death often? Right. Now somebody might think like intelligent, don't I need a doctor's degree, PhD, this is intelligence, but what did he mean by this now? The real smart person is the one that knows what's coming ahead and prepare himself for it. Yeah. That's the main difference between the human beings and animals. Animals, they just follow their immediate desire. They don't look ahead. Yeah. For the human being, we look ahead. A person goes to school for years because he knows the outcome of it, that he would make money, whatever there is. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran, that we look even more than that. Not to just to be limited in the tightness of this life, but to look at the spaciousness of this life and in the hereafter, and that is to prepare ourselves for the hereafter. Does that mean that a person would run away from this world and go to the desert or the jungle somewhere and just isolate himself? Because some groups of people on the face of earth, when they thought and pondered over this reality, it took us away in extremism. And other group, because of what they saw and they thought that this is what happens to people when they think about death, they ignored this fact completely and they said, let's just enjoy whatever we have. And when death comes, it comes and it doesn't matter what happens to us afterwards. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, both ways, of course, is not the proper way. The proper way is to realize that we have to depart from this life and to understand that this life is nothing but a passage to the hereafter. A person would not enter paradise, Jannah, unless he do the right work in this life. And a person would enter the hellfire as a result of their actions in this life. So we need to make this life in such a beautiful way so that it's the mean for us to the happy one in the hereafter. And the Prophet ﷺ said in a very beautiful hadith to stress this fact in the life of the Muslims. He said if the hour occurs, mm -hmm. the day of judgment is occurring now, and in the hand of one of you, fasila, a bud or a, a, a grass or, or a plant, plant it in the ground. Well, the day of judgment is happening. Why should I do that? It shows the attitude that no matter what, as, as long as we are living in this life, we have a purpose in it, we do what is good. We do what is needed to, be, uh, to establish the acts of worship on this face of earth and to make everything have the, the, the proper and the perfect sense in which everything fits in the worship of the Creator of the heavens and the earth alone. Yeah, this is amazing. I could just continue listening to you. We almo we're almost out of time. So I want to hit a few more points with all the distractions, mm -hmm. with all the things that are con the advertisements everywhere you go, especially living in the West, you have a lot of things calling you to materialism, calling you to some kind of solace, feeling that if you buy this, you're going to feel good. If you get this, you're going to you know, win that peace. How can we avoid being deceived? And is this a deception? 
and how can we get on that way, the way of being of the way of all the prophets of God and being successful in this life and the hereafter? Give us a blueprint. Well, with this is if a person realized that he has a purpose in this life and that he has to leave it to go to the next one, then he would seek this knowledge from the creator of the heavens and earth. When we read the last revelation from Allah to the human beings in the Quran and in the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu you will have orders and many, many orders not to be deceived. In the Quran, it clearly states the proper understanding of things. It will say that they say such a thing, but the truth is this. It makes the person see in the proper vision with his heart what is right and what is wrong so that he would have the patience to be steadfast on the truth. So not to be deceived by holding fast to the revelation from Allah. In anything that we have in this life, there are physical means that we have and there are the means that are mentioned in revelations. <coughs> physical means everybody agreed to it and everybody believe in it. But when it comes to the means of revelation, the rise and fall of nations, what is, would benefit the person in his life and hereafter, this is the only place that you can get it, is from the revelation of the creator of the heavens and earth, from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So people need to first think and see what is their purpose of their life. And they need to search for the truth. In the, if they are sincere in that search, then Allah wills, He will guide them to see the truth and to read the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they would take matters seriously and they won't be intoxicated anymore. They would see that this is, has a purpose in it and they would hold fast to the religion of Islam and not to be deceived by these materialistic things. Islam does not forbid things that are materialistic. We eat, we drink, we get married, we have children. We enjoy our life in this life, right? Because God created us in such a way that we tend to like the things that are present here. It is not forbidden for us. It's not something that is a sinful thing to enjoy our life. But what is sinful is to be forgetfulness, to use the beauty and the treasures in this life to be in state of forgetfulness and not to worship the creator of the heavens and earth. One important hadith, and I believe I mentioned it before, that clarifies the goals and means to us. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna anzalna al-mala salah That we had revealed wealth, money, so that the prayers are established. So the means is all thing that is present in this life, money and everything like that, there's nothing wrong with that. But it should, be, it should be used in the purpose of establishing the acts of worship and establishing this purpose of life that should never escape our minds and constantly a way to help us to do that because there's so much temptations to remember that one day we have to leave this world. And that's why the Prophet, peace be upon him, وسلم, he ordered us to increase the remember, remembrance of death. In another narration it says, because if you are in time of ease, and you might slip away in state of forgetfulness, the remembrance of death would get you back on track. And if you are in misery, you lost a loved one, you, are, you lost wealth or whatever there is, if you remember death, it will make it easy for you. So in both ways, a person will be happier if he would constantly remember death, and then he would be steadfast on the straight path and worship the Creator of the heavens and the earth alone. That makes a lot of sense. You got a lot of people out there that now are procrastinating and they are not adamant about searching for the truth. They might have tuned on and they're watching the show. Now we wanna create this sense of urgency because when they flick through the next channel, they might see some things that we would consider inappropriate. Mm -hmm. They might maybe go to watch a football game, basketball, there's nothing wrong with that, but continuously just doing this and spending time, you know, working, money, and now they just think that I'll deal with it when it comes. This attitude of not leaving off sin, not leaving off the things that your conscience is already telling you that it's bad. Just right. getting more into just maybe the club scene, going out with friends, partying, dating, fornicate, adultery, you know, gambling, drinking, drugs, and all these things. And, you know, death, uh, I'll just think about it when it happens. Right. We want to try to get people on the right path. And can you give some advice and some admonishment towards this? Right. And then we'll give them the glad tidings. Right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, he mentioned many verses in the Qur'an that talks about this fact in the human being that warning them not to be deceived by their wealth and their families and the materialistic things in this life till the moment of death comes and then the person would say Rabbi Rji'oon which means oh my Rabb, oh my Lord let me return back so that now after he see the reality of things after he see the angels of death coming to take his soul 
Now he wants to go back for what reason? Not to accumulate more wealth, not to be in state of forgetfulness as he was before, but to do the things that would benefit him in the everlasting life. So this is the time of regret that befalls onto the person that is dying is worse even than the physical punishment being thrown into the hellfire. We know what regret means. And that's why the person, when he take the matter seriously, he would save himself from this moment of regret at the moment of death. If you compare this moment to the moment of someone else, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and by the way, there is no goodness in our life unless we warn and give glad tidings, not from our own words, but from the revelation of Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, I warn you by the revelation, nothing but the revelation of Allah. He said about those who are believers, Those who would say, our Lord is Allah. And they were steadfast on the truth, on the submission of the, to the creator of the heavens and the earth. The angels will come down unto them at the moment of death with two things. Do not have the fear of what's coming ahead, which every human being, they fear death because they do, know, they do not know what's going to happen to them afterwards. So the angels will come and comfort them. Do not have the fear of what's coming ahead and do not grieve and be sad of what you're leaving behind. And this at the moment of death, you find people worries of, uh, about what's coming ahead and they have loved ones, they have children, they have wealth and they're very sad that they're leaving this behind them. But for the believers and only for the believers, they will be given the good news with regarding to what's coming ahead and what they're leaving behind. And then it would say, And we are your supporters and your, the, the, the ones that supported you in this life and in the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the glad tidings of Jannah, the paradise that Allah had prepared for the believers. So for the believers, while, he, while he's dying at the moment of death, people around him are sad and crying and things of that nature. But for him, he doesn't want to come back to this world. He is happy. He is content and pleased with the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is amazing. So this is for the believers. You said believers. Now, tell that person that who doesn't have peace and who's being sincere with himself and he is looking for peace and he wants to be among the believers. What do we mean when we say a believer and how could a, that believer now have peace in his life? The believer is the one that subjects himself to the mercy of the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And the mercy of the Creator of the heavens and the earth is so vast. He's the one that created. He's the one that provides. He's the one that with his will, I can raise my hand and I put my hand down. So that's why it's the worst injustice that a person can do on the face of earth is to worship other than him. Yahya ibn Zakaria, which is John the Baptist, السلام, one of the messengers of Allah, the messenger of, messengers of Islam, calling people to the submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He called people with five words, one of which when he gathered the children of Israel and he told them that Allah, God orders you to worship him alone and not to associate partners with him. And he gave them an example that pertained to the environment that they were in. He said, the example of this is that you have a man that purchased a slave with his own wealth. And he told them that this is my house and this is my work. Do the work and give me what you earned. But instead the slave, he worked, but he gave the earnings to someone else. So he said, who among you would like for his slave to do that? Right? And then he said, God, the creator of the heavens and the earth created you and provided for you. So why do you worship other than him? That's why it's the worst injustice. And that's why when a person dies in such a state, he deserves to be punished because he committed that injustice against his own self. When the mercy of Allah is so vast, calling the people with all the things that we see around us, reminding us of the creator of the heavens and the earth, just simply without no complications or too much philosophy in it, just worship him alone. And this is what the message of Islam is. And the final revelation of Allah, the Quran, teach you, teaches you this. Does not teach you to, to be uh, blindly following to another human being or manipulated by the ideas of human beings, just basically Submit yourself to the creator of the heavens and the earth and follow the teachings of the last of the messengers of Allah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in which is his teachings. It has the perfect way of life in economy, in politics, in mannerism, in acts of worship, in everything that you name it, you'll find a guidance in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu in it. And if you just don't want to take my words for it, go and read it for yourself. 
the truth has a characteristic to it. If you read it sincerely, if you see it, you would find the truth very clear. No doubt about it. Falsehood, you would find so much misery and so much doubt and so much things in your heart. But mm -hmm. for the truth, it becomes very clear to you. So Islam is clear. Islam, by doing Islam, you get that peace that we're all looking for. Right. This is great. Thank you very much You're for welcome. being with us, Sheikh. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank you for being with us again here on The Dean Show. Thank you all for the support. Alhamdulillah, all praises to the creator of the heavens and earth who's given us this ability to be with you and to sit with people such as Sheikh Zidane that we can benefit from and we'll let you benefit from. And you heard what he says, some great advice. Think about death and be optimistic that there's something better out there for you rather than just this world. So don't get caught up with all the trappings and the delights of this world. Put the time in and invest now for the hereafter. Be the best human being that you can be, worshiping the one God alone, living life how He wants you to live, not living life according to your desires. And this is the way of life that all the messengers of God taught, including the last and final messenger of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We hope to see you again next week on The Dean Show. Until then, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم It's cold, it's late Everybody's sleeping I arise and ask Allah to forgive me Oh Allah you see Oh Allah you know all the sins I do I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart I'm your sinful slave You're my loving Lord I'm the one who runs away Oh Allah guide me